Hi everybody, welcome back to another episode of Creeped Out. The last episode, episode 5, was a boy called Red. And that was like a time travel episode where the boy kept going back and forward in time to try and basically make his dad happy again. Which was quite interesting and it had a nice message. Uh, so that was like a happy episode. Um, so maybe this episode's going to be completely the opposite. So this episode is called The Call. Other than the Backstreet Boys song, <laughs> I don't know what it could mean. Um, maybe there's a spirit or a ghost or a demon that communicates via a phone call. I don't really have much else to go on in terms of a guess, so let's just jump straight into episode six. No one knows where he's from or where he's going to. Where, where did he come from? Where did he go? Does he even have? Have you ever felt uncomfortable in your own skin? Yes. What if Regularly. there was a reason for that? <laughs> One that you wished you never went searching for. It looks like we're having another episode that takes place in a school, which is good. I quite enjoy episodes that are based in schools. Child. I have finally found you. I finally found you. You are not as if you stay. Getting some weird message from underwater. Well, it's decision time. <laughs> if you don't go with the cheapest. Oh, ignore your father. A girl only gets one fifteenth. <laughs> Come on, Pearl. Which theme's calling out? That one there. The sea. Would you, would you want that after you've had nightmares about I need under the water stuff? For it to be considered a party. My party's in four days. Oh. Your brother's just. You know. Bit more popular and confident. There's a couple of episodes now of, the, of this that they always take place with unpopular kids. Maybe because it speaks to the fact that everyone feels like they're unpopular at a certain age. Told my mum and dad forced me to. You didn't. Do look like an amateur. Of course I didn't. I've got anywhere to protect too, you know. Hey Susie. <laughs> Focus. That's the best the great Danny Stokes could do. Relax. This is just phase one. Generating conversation. I wonder where that voice is coming from. She really reminds me of an actress. Do you know who she reminds me of? A really young Olivia Coleman. I'll have to Google to see if she's a daughter or something. She's not, because maybe it's the shape of the mouth. Or just like a face. Just, it looks like a very, very young Olivia Coleman, yeah. <laughs> see, it's things like that. Filthy humans, plastic bottles, choke sea life. Uh, uh, way to embarrass a child, Christ. What's your name? Is going to demonstrate what the plastic bottle is doing to marine life. That's not your water to steal, stupid cow. That teacher nice is Thanks, Ellie. weird. <laughs> How do you get so many people to listen to you? Humans are suckers. <laughs> <laughs> Don't think too hard. Act on instinct. People respond it's easier said than done, though, isn't it? It's like when people say, "Don't just worry about it. Just do it." Why are you looking so pleased to well, yourself? Well, <laughs> it doesn't just happen like Two, that. Actually. People have to deal with their own the nervousness and self-doubt. Power. Is she adopted? Oh. Oh. Is she like a mermaid? Pearl? I'm a bit nervous. What's about to happen? Pearl! Don't run away. Go and help her. Oh. Okay, never mind. <laughs> You're okay. Why? What's wrong? You're in the pool with all your clothes on. <laughs> You're under for like ages. <laughs> maybe she has the ability to breathe underwater, or not so far, maybe she's no, a mermaid or some sort of fish creature. Sorry, Danny, stop it! I'm not some dumb comic book character. Seriously, Pete, this is how we all start out. We're adopted, right? Yeah. I've always known you. Told you they were adopted. Mum and Dad said they never knew you. I mean, and it's obvious, but maybe the answer lies with them. Every hero has its origin story. You had no way of knowing how long she was under. 
because you ran away and at that time she could have gone, oh, we're up, back under water. <laughs> but he's getting really carried away with this. How am I supposed to know what I'm looking for? The one that says adoption stuff, maybe? <laughs> I like her though, she's funny. She's a good actress as well. What's this? That's called a USB, kids. Or did they just find her on the water? On the beach? Huh. Oh, ooh. They literally just found her on the beach. We tried everything to find out where you came from. How any of it was possible. So she must have come out of the water. We, we gave you a home. A loving upbringing and an annoying little brother. <laughs> She's not that bad. Tell. I come from the sea. It doesn't matter where you come from, Pearl. Only how you're raised. I mean, I think she this does, so but awesome. they can't just assume that. It could just be that someone what? left the baby there. But I mean, obviously, for the sake of the show and the supernatural abilities and all that jazz, yeah, she came from the city. Maybe, maybe that's the mum calling to her, like the visions and stuff, trying to get her to come back to the water. I don't look at the clock. I just like the way it feels. She's a really good actress. Which, if she is related to Olivia Carmen, would make sense. She's not. Okay, now she has powers. Like more than just swimming underwater powers. Is she like a siren? Because they have the power to like persuade and draw Thanks people in, don't they? Son. Wow. Look at you. I wanted to thank you. Your advice worked. I've got a birthday party coming up and for the first time ever everyone wants to come. It's a rare gift. Influence. What are you going to do with that power? Use it on teenage birthday party invites? Or do you want to change the world? Influence if she was a kid that you just got people to come to a party anything. for the first time, it feels like she's negating that a little bit. Like going, well, you could do that, but you could do something more it's important. Like I feel like that's really unhelpful advice for a teacher to give to a student. Like it should be positive and supportive and that's great and you know after that let's try and do something more you know rather than just well that's good that you got people coming to your party but we could be doing something more important with it that conveniently fits in with my beliefs <laughs> away from hordes of stinking humans and their pollution i don't like this teacher is she the mom <laughs> If she's that girl's mum, really, really, that's my guess. That's why she hates the people so much. Because of all the pollution in the water. Oh my god, why am I talking like this? Hey, Susie. Hiya. Anything <laughs> you spelt Call back. right? How well do you know her? Enough to know that she's right. Humans are destroying the planet, Danny. Talk about shoving a message down the viewer's throats. Hey, you dropped something. I said, hey! Hey, whoa. Getting dangerous now. This pre woman, I feel like she's poisoning your mind. Don't talk about her, you filthy little land dweller. God. What? Shut up! What's happening? Stop! Please, stop! stop. Yo, I'm gonna hurt someone. I'm guessing the teacher lives under there. Is she a monster? Oh, you and I, we're the same. Yep. I was hoping she was some sort me. of like sea monster. Everything. You're a mermaid. Is that what I am? Mermaid. These are human concepts. <laughs> poison our history like they poison the sea. The message is getting rammed down the throat a little bit too much. You. I was guiding you, helping you discover your powers. Come, I'll show you everything. But I think she may be 
Oh, we should talk Pearl. What are you doing here? I've got to leave her family. Say you home. She is home. What? You expect us to live in the sea with a bunch of singing crabs? <laughs> oh, be a god, dear. Here she is. Nothing. Filthy she's man. Not. She's lover. someone's daughter. Don't listen to her, Pete. She's someone's she's sister. She's a stinky barnacle sucking sea monster. Shut <laughs> Powers aren't designed to invite humans to birthday parties. They're for wrecking their ships upon rocks. Stop! You're hurting him. You're a siren. So she's a si girl. Yeah, 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 I knew it. enemy of the human race. Don't try her. She's horrible. That's not the way I was raised. Come on, Pearl. <laughs> I bet when they film this, they look right idiots. <laughs> Reject your true home. This All you've done is show is her anger <laughs> and vengeance. Dirty human. Tongue and and negativeness. Or at least the humanity has shown her some positive, some love and some positivity. I don't need randoms at a party to have fun. It was my birthday and I just fancied spending it here with my family. Oh. <laughs> Hand me the vomit bag, someone. <laughs> year later. Oh. So they've embraced who she is then, that's nice. How do you protect the ones you love if the monster is inside of you? Okay, so she's not related to Olivia Coleman. I just had a quick look. I have mixed thoughts on the episode because it had two different uh, messages that it was trying to get across. One I think worked really well, one I didn't. So the message that I thought worked really well was about who she was and her family accepting her. So I guess it was meant to be like a metaphor for discovering a new part of your personality, whether it's, I guess you could argue it was like, you could use sexuality as a me metaphor discovering your new sexuality or when you get new friends who lead you to a new path of life and they're trying to take you down this dark path but obviously you choose the right one in the end but also about how you can discover yourself and not everyone that you meet along the way is going to have the best intentions but in the end family are always the ones that are going to love and accept you or they should do and I guess that the, the episode really kind of put that across really well that she wasn't part of this family in terms of biologically she was adopted which she already knew but then they discovered she wasn't even the same species she was a siren not human but they still accepted her and they loved her and it wasn't even just we love you anyway we've raised you let's go back to normal they obviously gave her a pool to sleep in at night so they were fully accepting who she was and were doing what they could to help her kind of survive and live as as, as she can as a siren in a human world but the episode really frustrated me at times because they were hammering home the whole plot line of pollution and humans polluting the planet which don't get me wrong they're right and we don't do enough and we should be helping the planet and we put too much plastic in the sea and all that stuff they're entirely right but when i watch a tv show for escapism sometimes it gets a bit much like there was an episode of doctor who um was it orphan 55 or something of the latest series that had a similar sort of like humans ruined the planet because of the ozone layer we didn't do enough and it just was like ugh, we get it like we, you're not wrong it's just we watch this to escape from life and i'm not saying that it can't touch on real life points it can and sometimes they do it really well but this woman in the show pui is she called <laughs> just every other sentence was filthy humans nasty humans polluting the sea polluting the water <laughs> It was just like, okay, we get it, but your point then becomes moot because you're going on about it too much and people stop listening at that point. And you're not being effective, you're just kind of hammering the point to someone when people will start tuning out and not listening to it anymore. So it's weird because the episode did two different things and had such different results for me. One storyline really annoyed me, one storyline did really well. It did hit a lot of typical notes where she was embracing her new identity and started to hurt the people around her. 
But that's fairly normal for these kind of kids shows, and that's fine. It happens in, in adult stuff as well, like Marvel shows and all that kind of stuff. Um, but overall, I think it did portray a really good message. And the kids watching it, I think, they could take away something really good from this. Which is that when you discover that you're maybe not who you think you are, whether it's a gender identity or sexuality, it's okay. And you can speak about it. And there will be friends and family out there who will love you and accept you for who you are. And I think that's really nice. And it's really nice that they kind of touched on that. I do hope that kids watch it and take that from it. By the way, that was my opinion of episode six, The Call. Let me know what you thought of it in the comments below. Did you enjoy it? What's your thoughts on the series so far? My name's Scott. I hope you're well. I hope you're keeping safe. I'll see you guys in episode seven. Take care.